Suppose a production line operates with a mean filling weight of 16 ounces per container. Since over or under filling can be dangerous, a quality control inspector samples 24 items to determine whether the filling weight must be adjusted. The sample revealed a mean of 16.32 ounce with a sample standard deviation of 0.8 ounces. Use a 0.10 level of significance. Can it be concluded that the process is out of control? And I gave you a hint, guys. Not equal 16 ounces. So if it is 16, we're good. If it's not 16, we need to readjust this one. So here is how we begin. So question one. H O H A mean is 16, mean is not 16. So I want to check if it is out of control. So this is where the claim is. All right. Uh, we have a sample size of 24. X bar is 16.32. And S, guys, is 0 0.8 ounces. And alpha is 0 0.10. This is a t-test. And since the sample size is less than 24, look what I said at the very beginning. If the sample size is less than 30, assume population is normally distributed. So I'm not repeating this everywhere. OK, let's run the t-test, guys. What we're using today is called the p-value approach. So we'll go to uh, stat, tests, t-test, mu zero is 16, x-bar is 16.32, S is 0 0.8, N is 24. And guys, make sure to select the proper alternative sign, which is not equal to. You have to choose the proper one. So that's not equal. And I can do a draw here. Oh, there is a large p-value probably. So T is 1.96 and the p-value as you can see guys, 0 0.0623. Make sure guys that you can confirm that getting the same figures as mine when you do this. Okay. And now, uh, what is alpha? Alpha is 10%, so that's good. We're gonna reject HO. If it was 5%, guys, I could give you the same exact problem on the test. And instead of 10%, I'll put 5%. Then you have to say greater than alpha. <laughs> and you fail to reject HO, but because alpha is big, 6% is less than 10%, you reject HO. And you say there is enough evidence at the 0 0.10 level of significance. Why do we need to include this in statistics, guys? You're telling a reader there is a chance, 10% chance that you could have rejected HO by mistake because the level of significance is the probability of rejecting the null hypothesis when it is true. So even when you do research in statistics, guys, it's possible to make mistakes. That's why nothing is 100%, you know, just sure in statistics. There's enough evidence at the 10% uh, uh, level of significance to support 
the claim that the mean is different from 16, uh, what, is it, what is it, uh, ounces? Yeah. That means the system is out of control. Because once it is different from 16, it is out of control. So can it be concluded that the process is out of control? The answer is yes. Okay, so that is number one. Let's go to number two. A survey done one year ago showed that 45% of the population participated in recycling programs. In a recent poll, a random sample of 1,250 people showed that 598 participate in recycling uh, programs. Test the hypothesis that the proportion of the population who participate in recycling programs is greater than it was one year ago. Okay, I need your help, guys. You need to participate with me in this one. So how do you state the null and the alternative hypothesis? Question two. Okay, who's gonna tell us? Uh, show that the proportion is greater than what it was one year ago. Would a student tell me what HO and HA are? No, this is just still uh, chapter seven. I'm not doing chapter eight yet. We're still testing the proportion and uh, Chapter eight will come later, but it happened that this is a mix of exercises from both chapters. So who would like to tell me what uh, the null and the alternative? Waiting. Yeah. H is a claim, but it's P, right? P that more than 45%. That's the claim. Less than 45%. It says one year ago, and we know one year ago it was 45%. So greater than one year ago, greater than 45%. So guys, the key word for you is this. That's gonna tell you what the claim is and where to put it. And greater has to be in the alternative. You cannot put it in the null, and then the null will be the total opposite, which is less than or equal to. And I'm see, guys, this is good sheet because I even tell you what section, you know, just this question comes from. So uh, you can rely on that. Okay, we have N, which is 1250. We have X, guys, which is 598. And we have alpha, which is 0.05, 5%. And it's a proportion Z test. Okay, let's do this. Stat tests. Zero point four five. X is five ninety eight. N is twelve fifty. Uh, proportion greater than. We're gonna choose greater than, guys. And you get Z is 2.018. Uh, okay, 0, 02. P value, which is 0 0.0218. Now, this is very, very important. You go back and redo all those problems that we did. This is the only way to check and make sure that you really mastered this chapter. Okay, that's less than alpha. You agree with me, it is less than alpha, so we reject HO. 
And unfortunately, we don't have, we haven't done any exercise yet where the claim is in HO. So hopefully I'll find one where the claim is in HO. Reject HO and then you say there is enough evidence at the 0 0.05 level of significance to support the claim that, and you just copy it and paste it, guys, that the proportion of the population who participate in recycling program is greater than it was one year ago. Okay, so that is question number two, guys. Any questions about this one? If anything, it's not clear to you guys, how did I do the first one, et cetera, please ask me uh, so I can uh, clarify that. Okay, so we're skipping eight, three, because that's chapter eight, uh, question three, question four, that's chapter eight. Uh, We'll skip this one for now, chapter eight. Six, we skip chapter eight. We're gonna do chapter uh, question seven because you see it says 7.3. An overnight package delivery service has a promotional discount rate in effect this week only. For several years, the mean weight of the package delivered by this company has been 10.7 ounces. A random sample of 12 packages mailed this week has a sample mean of 11.81 ounces with a standard deviation of 2.24. That's the claim that the mean weight of all packages mailed this week is greater than 10.7. So he's telling you guys the question directly. The claim is greater than. That's what we need to test. So let's uh, let's do this. Question seven. Okay. So H O, and it's a mean. It's not a proportion here. It's talking about standard deviations and sample mean greater than ten point seven ounces. So just put the claim here. And the null hypothesis will be less than 10.7. Use alpha equals 1%, he says. And N is 12. X bar, guys, is 11.81. And standard deviation S is 2.24. It's a t-test. Okay, let's run the t-test. And do that okay so second distribute sorry second stat tests t test so in chapter seven guys you're using number one number two and number five mainly Mu zero, 10.7, X bar 11.81, uh, S is 2.24, N is 12. And then guys choose the alternative sign, which is greater than. Calculate. You could do a draw if you want. Calculate is faster. So T is 1.717, and the p-value is 0 Okay, guys, now we need to compare this to alpha. 
I'm done with the calculator. I don't need it anymore. Look, alpha is 1%, which is 0 0.01. Well, if you put 0 0.01, here's how I compare it. Zero is zero. Decimal point, decimal point, zero is zero. I have a five here. I have a one and five is bigger than one. So that's bigger than alpha. You fail to reject HO. And you start. When it is a fail, guys, I told you, you start with there is not enough evidence at the 0 0.01 level of significance to support the claim. We are saying that we cannot support the claim, uh, whatever the claim is, that the mean weight of all packages mailed this week is greater than 10.7. Uh, answers. Any questions, guys, right here? So that's number uh, seven. Okay. Uh, let's see. Eight, we don't do now. It's later. Ten, we don't do. Eleven, we don't do. Twelve is 8.2. Thirteen. Uh, 15, not yet. 16, not yet. 17, yes. It says section 7.2, as you can see, guys. So that will be the last one. And again, don't lose this handout, guys. We're going to need it for chapter 8. So I'm going to do seven, uh, 17. Dental associations recommend that the time lapse between routine dental checkups should average six months. A random sample of 36 patients records at one dental records at one dental clinic showed that the average time between routine checkup to be 7.2 months with a known population standard deviation of two months. Would you guys agree with me that this is a Z test because he says population standard deviation. And that's why I labeled this as section 7.2. Do the sample data indicate that patients wait longer than recommended between dental checkups? Okay, I would like a students to suggest the null and the alternative here. Do the sample data indicate that patients wait longer than recommended? What would be HO and HA, guys? Yes? No input? Are you guys still with me? I need an input from a student. Otherwise, I'm not going to proceed with this question, guys. I'll, shall I ask by names? So what would be the null and the alternative uh, hypothesis here? Shouldn't be difficult. Yeah. Thank you. This one, students. Uh, save the situation. I was going to pause this problem. Uh, you need to participate, guys. That's the only way that you can really learn the material. And when you participate, trust me, you will never forget, you know, just what you said. Exactly. More than six. Because we say it's average of six months and we're saying that it takes longer. That means more than six months. You are correct. That's the claim. And that's less than or equal to six. And now N is 36, guys. Uh, X bar, he says 7.2. Uh, standard deviation is 2. And alpha is 1%. It's not a theta, not uh, S. He says non-population standard deviation. I'm sorry, guys. Let me just make it clear. That's sigma. 
So because this is sigma, guys, we have to use a z-test. This is the only time where we use a z-test. Okay, ready? Let's do this. Stat tests, number one, z-test. Data, not data, stat. Mu zero, it's uh, six months. Sigma is two. X bar is 7.2. N is 36 patients and greater. Look guys, this is a greater than, I'm gonna need a greater than here. Look, greater than, calculate. Okay, Z is 3.6 and look at the p-value guys. It says 1.59 E minus four means you have to move the decimal point four digits to the left. So it would be 0 0.000159, which is very small. So you reject HO. Reject HO. There is enough evidence at the 0 0.01 level of significance. To support the claim, uh, that patients wait longer than recommended. If the dentists want to find out if this is the case, they need to run a hypothesis test, guys. They need to hire some people to run a hypothesis test for them. So uh, they can't just tell from one patient or two. So they collect, you know, just number of patients, they do a study. And this is the study, guys, just to give you a feel of how important hypothesis testing is in all fields, in all fields of life. And you can see that this is an example. Okay, before I do the activity, guys, I wanna do one more last exercise where the claim turns out to be in the null because now you're making an impression that all the claims always in the alternative. But no, there are cases where the claim will happen to be in the null. So let me just do one more uh, exercise right here. An oceanographer claims that the mean dive depth of a North Atlantic right whale is 115 meters. So is means equal sign, guys. Section 7.2. So H O H A. Sorry. Mean equals 115. And you guys agree that this is the claim. See this time. And you know what the sign is going to be here, not equal, because equal and not equal are always together. A random sample of 34 dives, so N is 34. Depth has a mean of 121.2 X bar. Once he talk about the sample, it's an X bar. So it's, uh, he says from a sample of 34 whales, uh, depth times, the mean is 121.2, so that's X bar. And a standard deviation, he didn't say sigma, he didn't say population standard deviation, just treat it as S. So it's a t-test, 24.2 uh, meters. Is there an evidence to reject the claim? Do you notice, guys, the question here is asking you if you can reject the claim. He will never ask you to reject or uh, the claim if the claim is not in the null hypothesis. If the claim is in the alternative, he will ask you if you can support the claim. Okay, so uh, is there enough evidence to reject the claim at alpha equals 10%? Okay, it's a t-test. And let's do it. Stat, tests, t-test. Uh, mu zero is 115. There's a value, guys. You begin with this value right here. 
uh, X bar is 121.2, S is 24.2, N is 34, and different from, and if you guys like to do a draw for the p-value, you can see it in action, sorry. I'm just gonna, once I'm done, I'm gonna go back and redo this because it wasn't shown on the screen. So this is what, this is what I did guys, that tests, uh, t-test. 115 for mu zero, X bar is 121.1, S is 24.2, and sample size is 34, and it's not equal to, guys. Then you had to calculate. So T is 1.494, and P value, see how important the P value is, 0 0.1447. Okay, uh, that p-value is more than alpha, guys. That's 10%. So fail to reject HO. Okay, let's write the conclusion now. There is not, because you have fail, you have to start with not, period. Enough evidence at the 0 0.10 level of significance. Can a student complete the sentence for me? To what? There is not enough evidence at the 0 0.10 level of significance to. We fail to reject, reject. HO, to reject the claim. Yeah, we're saying we cannot reject the claim. So the claim probably right, but we're not accepting it. Remember, guys, failing to reject something, it doesn't mean that you accept it. That's uh, the, it's just you fail to reject it because you don't have enough evidence, you know, just otherwise. That's, so there is not enough evidence at the 0 0.10 level of significance to reject the claim. And now, guys, you see that we use the word reject in the final statement because the claim happened to be in uh, HO. Okay.